Spoilers! If you haven't seen the first episode of Prehistoric Planet and care about being spoiled about the inclusion of some critters, stay away from this video till you've seen it. This video was made by using my own knowledge, scientific papers, as well as the words of the people involved with the show itself. This is in no way meant to provide undue criticism towards the hard work that went into the show. In fact, there are very little instances where it may come off as me saying that something is wrong. As I am not an expert on every single group of animals, living or extinct, I used the words of other experts that may know the given organism better than I. Many criticisms are merely nitpicking and do not affect the quality of the overall show, and many are also debatable. I used the words provided by lead paleontological consultant Dr. Darren Nash via his Twitter threads discussing the designs and design philosophy of all the animals in Prehistoric Planet to construct a more fleshed out scientific discussion than the show provides. Obviously, the show is meant to be more visual and myth-breaking or trope-busting than purely informational or educational. It does deliver a good amount of scientific information, but only that which is absolutely needed in the context of the scene or episode. I think a lot of people wanted more thorough explanations of why some animals were reconstructed the way they were, especially considering how strongly updated they are with speculative but scientifically rooted displays, behaviors, and tissues because of the stranglehold the 80s and 90s nostalgia-fueled outdated reconstructions have on most dinosaur-related media. So, please take all this into consideration when watching my scientific reviews of Prehistoric Planet. I was not aware of any information that may come out after the writing, recording, editing, or publication of these videos that may counter any issues I bring up with the dinosaurs of Prehistoric Planet. As of the writing of this preamble, no full-length documentaries or discussion of the behind-the-scenes work on the series has come out. Some rather short tidbits on the location filming, philosophy, and computer animation work have been released, but this does not entail the full breadth of the project. Tethy Draco Design Tethy Draco is not highlighted for long, but it is name-dropped. It makes up the majority of the adults and hatchlings in the beach's nesting colony. Attenborough notes how large their heads are, and they surely are. The skull is about as long as the body and neck together, and may even be longer. This is based on a similar thing going on with every single close relative of Tethy Draco. Unfortunately, like with Alcyone, Tethy Draco is known from very fragmentary material, some ulnae, a humerus, and a thigh and shin bone. The authors that described the remains, the same team that described Alcyone and most of the pterosaurs from this segment of this episode, found them to belong to a pteranodontid pterosaur. That means it was related to critters like Pteranodon and Geosternbergia. Thanks to the very fragmentary remains, the prehistoric planet team could go in just about any direction they wanted for the design here. They opted for a nesting colony of mostly females, shown in the sexual dimorphism of their small crests and boring colors. Body size and crest differences are seen throughout most of the known pteranodontids, so this is highly plausible to have occurred in Tethy Draco as well. It closely resembles most known pteranodontids, with the slightly upturned beak, medium-length tail, tiny body, and thick neck. Behavior Not much can be said in the behavior department for Tethy Draco, as they are not the main focus of the segment. That being said, they are shown as contrast to the sea turtle-esque parenting behavior of the Alcyone. Tethy Draco make nests on the beaches and guard their chicks from predators. This sort of mass nesting behavior is actually seen in the fossil record. There is a fossil nesting ground in the Hamai region of Zhangjiang, China, belonging to Hamipterus. A Brazilian bone bed is known of Cayuajara that contains tons of individuals of varying ages with a concentration of juveniles. There are also 750 specimens of the bristle-toothed South American pterodostro, showing that they may have had nesting sites as well. 
Though comparatively little is known about pterosaur parenting behavior, enough is now known to show that different groups were doing different things. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubbinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.